Welcome everyone to the AI Research Bytes. This is a series of short and informative talks showcasing cutting edge research work from ServiceNow's AI research team. The AI Research Bytes are open to everyone, especially those interested in keeping up with the fast paced AI research community. Today's session features a 15 minute talk from Raymond Lee, who will uh, give us an awesome overview of the Big Code project and it will be followed by a 10 minute Q&A. As usual, please use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen to ask your questions. Raymond is a research developer in the Foundation Models Lab and currently working on multi multilingual uh, foundation models. Previously, he was involved in the big call, the project, uh, <clears throat> which was about developing LLMs for code. So up to you, Raymond. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Fanny and David, for the invitation. Uh, so yes, I'm going to present Big Code, which is a project about open and responsible development of LLMs uh, for code. Um, and this is a short disclaimer that um, everything I'm talking about uh, today is uh, best of our knowledge. And so today, first, I'm going to present uh, the Big Code project in general. Um, then I'm going to uh, give a bit more details about uh, our latest milestone, uh, so the Stack V2 and Star Code 2. And finally, we're going to see uh, some applications, so uh, Big Code in action. But let's uh, first start with uh, some context. Um, so Copilot, I think uh, many of you know what this is, but uh, it's a smart autocomplete, so a code assistant uh, that helps developers to enhance their productivity. Uh, for example, uh, here uh, it can uh, take the doc string that you've just written to help you write uh, the body of the function, um, and hence it, it makes you code faster, basically. And these applications are powered by uh, large language models. Uh, they, they use as, as context, for example, the current file that you're writing or all the files from the same uh, rep repository. Um, but the thing is, uh, so these tools are really uh, great and useful to increase your productivity, but often the models that power these applications, they are uh, hidden behind APIs. You don't have access directly to the model. And this kind of slows down the research in this field uh, of uh, models for code. And so that's why that's a bit why we started the Big Code project. So we wanted to kind of make this kind of research more accessible to many organizations and research groups. And so it started as a collaboration between Hugging Face and ServiceNow Research. And it's an open scientific collaboration. And what does it mean? Uh, it, it means that uh, basically we uh, opened the project to anyone who wanted to join and invited many people from other groups, uh, whether industry or academia, to collaborate with us to build uh, LLMs for code in a collaborative way. Um, and before we go into some of the technical details of this project, I want to highlight uh, a few points uh, that are non-technical, but are nonetheless very important, and that we, we try to be diligent in really uh, think about those questions when we develop uh, large language models. The, the first one would be the consent of data subjects. Um, so to train these big models, we uh, scrape uh, humongous amounts of data from the internet, uh, for example, from GitHub. And you should ask yourself, can you use third-party copyrighted data to train machine learning models? Then there's the question of privacy risks. Uh, this public data will usually contain a lot of PII, uh, so personally identifiable information. And if we train our models on this data, then we uh, we need to ask, do we want our LLMs to distribute uh, this PII without the user's consent? And finally, there's also the question of uh, software safety and security. 
because these models could be used uh, to generate malware, or they could provide code suggestions that uh, could be less secure. So these are all kind of topics that we try to keep in mind when developing these models. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, we've seen recently uh, that most of these large language models have been developed in a closed manner. For example, the training data is not disclosed for most of them. And this uh, hinders the research on several aspects. And first is that the, the content creators, so the people that share their data or their code online, they don't know if this data was used and they have no way of removing it from the data sets. This also limits the scientific reprodu reproducibility of these works. Um, like you, you can claim certain performance, but if other people are not able to reproduce it, it uh, kind of diminishes the value of uh, the results. There is also the potential benchmark contamination, which is also harder to verify when the data sets are not disclosed. And then often these models are not released, but only made available through uh, APIs. And this limits uh, the research on, for example, the safety and alignment of these models, uh, studying the models in our representations, or also uh, researching uh, adaptation methods. And so for these reasons, uh, and we, we try to make this research uh, more open. And in B-Code, we try to be as transparent as possible in our development of uh, these models. So we release our data sets, uh, we released our trained models, uh, as well as the code. Uh, and we try to document as much as possible uh, the model, the code, um, et cetera. And uh, the goal here is that uh, first, by being uh, by releasing our artifacts, we allow we would allow other groups to build upon our research and advance uh, this field of research. And also by being more transparent, we think that we, we allow to build more trust uh, in, in these uh, large models. And so this slide shows a bit some of the main milestones that we've reached, we, we've reached uh, in the Big Code project. Uh, the first one is um, our first data set, the Stack V1, and our first model, Santa Coder, uh, in 2022. Then in May 2023, we released our second uh, model, so Star Coder, uh, which is much larger, so 15 billion parameters. And finally, uh, earlier this year, uh, in 2024, we released uh, Star Coder 2, together with uh, the Stack V2, a much larger data set. So I'm not going to uh, go into the details of each of these uh, milestones, but uh, if you want more detail, I encourage you to go check out our papers. Um, um, but I wanted to maybe highlight a few points on our data collection that um, uh, kind of show how and why we want to be transparent uh, on our uh, data pipeline. And so the first two points are a strong near the duplication and a manual data quality inspection step, um, which we both find found were uh, crucial in order to uh, maintain a very high uh, data quality standards. And then we, we have a step of removing the personally identifiable information from the data sets. Uh, so we collected um, a data of a PII annotation uh, for a code. We, we trained the model uh, on this data and used this model to detect and remove some of the PII from uh, the data sets. And the, the last point is about uh, data decontamination. So we remove uh, our training samples that would contain uh, test examples from our evaluation benchmarks. And 
If we don't do that, then there's a risk to um, make the benchmarks less trustworthy because a good performance could be due uh, to just a test example being uh, leaked in the training data. So that, that's not something we want to avoid. And so with uh, on, on this uh, data set, we train our models, uh, so star coder, star coder 2. And so by releasing uh, the data sets and the models, we allowed uh, many other research projects to build upon our work. And this slide kind of shows a non-exhaustive uh, view of some of the some of these other projects. And for example, on the left, you can see uh, several models that use the stack as part of their uh, pre-training corpus. And uh, on the right, uh, some models that were fine-tuned based on one of the Starkholder models. And it was uh, re really, really cool for me to see uh, all these other groups uh, just building upon our research, uh, thanks to the fact that we released uh, these artifacts. Um, yeah. And so this, this kind of uh, shows the kind of impact that Bcode has had on the broader research community. Uh, the application I wanted to show you is text to flow in Flow Designer. Um, so here, um, the application allows you to automatically generate workflows based on English descriptions of, of these. So as you can he see here, you can give just a name for your flow and write in natural language uh, what the flow is supposed to do and the model will generate this for you. And so for this as well, they used uh, a star coder model which they fine tuned on, uh, on workflow data. And, um, to, and so they, they used the model to generate the workflows as structured JSON. Um, and they also use a lightweight uh, retriever to reduce the hallucinations and improve the performance. So the, these two uh, uh, awesome applications show a bit how uh, a research product, uh, a, a research uh, project could be used in uh, in uh, in really cool applications. So to conclude this presentation, uh, maybe some key takeaways, and I think would be that uh, we try to be as open and transparent as possible in uh, this project, and we found that uh, it really enables to build trust in the models we develop, in these large language models. It also fosters innovation on the topic by allowing uh, other groups uh, to build upon our research. And all this while also bringing uh, awesome value to ServiceNow's customers. So, yeah. Thank you.